like to now call my second guest valentin valentin first of all congratulations and uh, for all your efforts over the years because it's not just yesterday you started doing work on sanitation you've been at it for a long time so how long have you been working on sanitation um for households about 20 years and prior to that i was doing industrial waste water uh, okay. little kid <laughs> So what does finish stand for? I mean, you want to finish up the job somehow? What job do you want to finish? So it's nothing to do with Finland. So it's an acronym. It stands for Financial Inclusion, Improved Sanitation and Health. Okay. So, so what does financial inclusion mean? Financial inclusion is a whole a range of services. It ranges from uh, financial literacy, so being able to know uh, what you're getting into, uh, it's micro savings, micro credits, um, and I'm saying micro because they tend to be on a micro level. It is uh, pensions, insurance, the whole uh, the whole gambit. So things we take for for granted. Uh, for many um, people are financially excluded. There they don't even exist. So they're relying on informal systems. In financial inclusion, you're being more part of the uh, the formal system. Okay. So the thing is, um, I know that you have been working on raising funds for sanitation. So you're taking funds from people who have money to build toilets for the poor who are not financially well off. Now, uh, is that true? Are they giving you a grant? Are they? I mean, are they giving? people i mean organizations like finnish grants what how does it work how does the financial model work so basically if you look into the the system the um we all use a, a telephone right now and if you go into a village or a town even poor people tend to have a telephone and many of them don't have a toilet so it's also a little bit on how much do you want a um a, this thing how do you want much do we want uh, this asset so the first thing we do is we really bring up the, the aspirational value of a toilet that is really valuable to you and it doesn't mean it necessarily only on health it can be on privacy dignity safety for women so these arguments are used to put it up higher in their priority listing the second thing we do is even if people really want a toilet are there people who can build it are there local masons? Are there entrepreneurs who can build it? And who can build it properly at a low cost and affordable, uh, mean, making it affordable. So we train uh, so thousands and thousands and thousands of masons, and we're still looking how to institutionalize that in, uh, in the countries we work in. These are currently six. And then the third thing, people who don't have a toilet, um, and even if you have people now who can build a toilet, they tend to be poor. So a out-of-pocket uh, outlay of 200, 300 uh, euros or dollars is, is difficult for them. But this is now where we link up with financial institutions, microfinance. In India, the banks sell for group linkage. And we tie it up with, uh, with these sort of financial loan products. So we build the capacities of the MFIs, uh, the financial institutions, and uh, we train their staff on uh, being able to market sanitation loans. What are the advantages, disadvantages? And as a starter, they always, uh, any financial institution has to start with financial literacy. So the inclusion is not just a loan. In Africa, we find that it's a lot of savings are attached to it, which in India is a little bit more difficult. So based on the local part, we see what, uh, what works best. And that's where the government, uh, the fort, angle of what we call the diamond comes in. So we have to not only oblige with government policies, we have to also to attune to government policies and uh, work with existing bylaws or change bylaws. That's also what we do. So it's a little bit with the government. We work on demand creation, but also the policy and enabling environment. Uh, that's very good, um, Valentin. But the thing is, who are these people who are... Um, giving the money to the financial institutions 
you said there are pension funds i mean it, why should anybody want to invest in a toilet or invest in such activities because what are they going to get out of it so if you look into it from a different angle so um if you look at from a household we don't subsidize anything so a household would take a loan a commercial loan from a microfinance institute pay the interest and have a at the end have a sanitation asset a toilet a usable toilet a safely managed toilet because we don't do it basic or improved we do only safely managed then from the financial point of view is this is a commercial loan going to the household and what the uh, financial institution typically would do is the first thing they assess is this household capable of paying back and they are smart enough to see if they are farmers when do they have money oh there's a harvest time then and then so the repayment will be after the harvest when they get money in their pockets so they they tune the the products according to the the needs of the customers okay now the thing is why should the private sector involve itself in this because or uh, now isn't this the government's job to ensure that everybody has toilets and so forth yeah in a way you could say yes um but if the government is um is not doing it or is taking its time in doing it so that's where the private sector typically comes in that's uh, a second thing and the way we we have a sort of a very basic way of looking into the sector if everything which is below the ground is public and everything which is above the ground is private so if you have a substructure which typically in sanitation can be pits can be a linkage to the sewer system that could be public but the the toilet house or the house uh, the the toilet inside the house that's entirely private so that should be privately financed as an asset of the house now in practice it doesn't work exactly like that because quite often the government doesn't have money or inclination to invest in the public part and then the question is for the household what do you do you want to wait for the government to come this may come or may never come or you want to take care of your own situation and quite often we find that this sort of self initiative of the people prevails so it is uh, true that sanitation is a public good uh, but it yeah uh, sometimes people take private initiatives as the public good is wanting uh, okay this is very this is this makes sense there's another curiosity question now these mfis uh, you see they do they have is there funding coming from national sources or are they international sources also like you are in the netherlands and you are doing all this in different developing countries what is the role of international finance in this and especially what does the international financial investor get from investing in sanitation in developing countries yeah it's an excellent question so um it's it's a myriad of uh, investments so if you take any microfinance institution they don't, they don't have money the first thing they need to do is they need to borrow money themselves they borrow it from banks they borrow it from other uh, other financial institutions uh, for onward lending and that's their business and they they charge a margin on that and that's their business model as well now sometimes they get the money also internationally uh the difficulty with international though our interest rates let's say in the Netherlands are extremely low as compared to India there's a huge currency risk so that has to be hedged to be to safeguard it from um, this currency fluctuation and that makes it expensive again investing in developing countries is seen in this part of the world by financial institutions highly risky so they want to have a premium on it so all that together makes that the cost of foreign money is not necessarily going to be cheaper than local money so what uh, financial institutions mfis would do they would see who gives them the best terms if it's international they take international if it's local it's it's going to be local and it can be a combination okay valentin in your uh, long career uh, and involvement with sanitation what would you say was your best recent achievement you know in terms of uh, contribution to the cause so i think we sort of cracked uh, practice scaling uh, scaling sanitation issue 
So the uh, Raja was talking about the government of India putting a lot of money and it's having achieved a lot. That uh, we, uh, with much more modest means, uh, we are currently doing one sanitation system every 90 seconds on a 24-7 basis and it's safely managed sanitation. And for a program which is only with a relatively small uh, grant money part, that I think that's quite an achievement. So being able to go from a project to a program, to an organization, to an approach, I think that's our main achievement. We are now much more an approach than a, uh, we started as a project, we're not a program anymore, we have an organization, but we're becoming more like an approach. This is how you can approach the sanitation challenge. This is very interesting because usually this is a terrain of the public sector. And so if by, um, with more modest funds, but a different system of governance and uh, uh, management. If you are able to achieve uh, per unit of money invested more, it is uh, it's something to be studied. Um, so I'm I'm afraid the time is over, but we will come to the last question in the end. Okay, because a lot of students here they might uh, want to study what you are doing for. Uh, for learning purposes, for investigation. Okay? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Valentine. Thanks, Emma. Very nice.